last week the senior pastor uh, spoke to us on the how of evangelism that is how to evangelize and today i want to take it a step further so what, last week was the how somebody say the how and and those of you maybe if you're watching online if you've not listened to that message i will beg you to go and listen to it that's the beauty of technology you can go back and li listen to it so senior pastor told us last week what how to do it how to do it today we want to talk about how to do it well somebody say how to do it well because you can know how to do something but if you don't do it well you don't get great results so today we want to talk about how to do it well look at your neighbor and say you need to do it well you know there's a song uh, song uh, writer um and recrouch you need to listen to the song he, he wrote a song very powerful song he says god does all things well he does all things well so god is a master doer because anything that god does he does it well i mean i'm an example look at me handsome man dapper can you see what god has done everything matches my shoe you know that, that's the beauty of god Dude, i'm not talking about me now but you know what i mean god when god wants to do something he does it very well he doesn't do it half-heartedly and so if you're a child of god you need to do things like your father praise god you know the psalmist says i am wonderfully and beautifully made he says my soul knows it well that is the handy you are the handiwork of god. look at yourself and, and just and go say look at me i am the handiwork of what god does best so this morning we want to talk about how to do it well and actually uh, i've got a lot of notes but let me tell you how to do it well number one three things we need to do to do it well how many things very simple so remember my message this morning is very simple number one is that to do it well we need to engage the holy spirit somebody say engage the holy spirit i didn't hear you what do i need to do to do it well engage how many of you drive a car do you drive a car anybody here drive a car you drive a car yeah i saw i saw mpl this morning park this car i'm like yeah i'm i was really happy for him yeah I was happy because, you know, he packed very well. You know, some people, I won't mention their names. When you see how they pack, the car is like that. I'm like, oh, come on. Praise God. Why did I talk about cars? You, you know, it doesn't matter how beautiful your car is. It doesn't matter how powerful your car is, whether it's electric, hybrid, petrol head, or diesel head. You need to engage the power of the car for the car to take you from one place to the other so how to do it well well the title of my message is how to become an effective witness that's the title of the message how to become an effective witness so you need to first of all engage the holy spirit if you want to do it well somebody say i need to engage the holy spirit number two things that you need to do to be effective is that you need to engage with your Jerusalem. You need to engage with your Judea. You need to engage with your Samaria. And you need to engage with the uttermost parts of the world. Okay? So you need to engage with your environment. Put it in summary. Say, I need to engage with my environment. So what's the first thing we need to do to be an effective witness? Engage the Holy Spirit. So we need to put the Holy Spirit, as you put your car into gear, you engage the Holy Spirit in your gear. Then you engage with your environment. Number three, if time will permit us, I want you to look at me now. This one is serious. This one is deep. Somebody mentioned it in the Sunday school this morning. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's the Holy Spirit. For us, for you and I, to be effective in evangelism, we need to be a credible witness. A credible witness. Okay, shall we start? So that's the message. We can go home now. I've told you the three things we need to do. But let's go deeper. Let's look at our text. In Acts chapter 8, chapter 1, if you read it from verse 4, 
Once when he was eating with them, Jesus, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem. Everybody look at me. So the apostles were based in Jerusalem, just like you are based in Nottingham, right? Or you're based in Chesterfield or wherever you're based. Jesus said to them, he said, do not leave where you are based until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But, somebody say, but. So, look at me. Jesus the apostles asked him a question. Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. Praise God. And so Jesus gave them the right answer to the right question. He says, but you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, I'm reading the NLT, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. Somebody say, telling people about me everywhere. Okay, so Jesus said, this is what you need to do. But before you can tell people about me everywhere, you need to have an encounter for you to be effective. Remember, we, today we are talking about how to do it well. How to be effective in doing it. He says, you will receive power. And then, as a consequence of receiving power... You will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. And then he broke it down, Jerusalem. And last week, the senior pastor went into detail about what and who is in your Jerusalem. And then he says, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So who is a witness? So the title of the message is how to become an effective witness. A witness is somebody who testifies about what he or she has experienced or seen. Amen? So I remember many years ago, I was asked to go to court to testify, you know, about a patient, you know, because I'm a doctor. And so because I'm a doctor, I went there to tell the court what I knew, what I experienced from my professional position about the matter praise god so i'm a witness or i can put it for that to say i'm an expert witness okay so a witness is somebody who testifies or who tells a story amen sometimes a, a witness preaches but actually what a witness does is to tell a story what do you know? What have you experienced? You tell it. Somebody say, tell it. Look at you and say, you need to tell it. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, you will encounter the Holy Ghost and then you will be a witness. We'll talk about the Jerusalem later. Now, so that means that not every witness is effective because... I don't know if you've been to a court of law. In a court of law, there is a defense team and there is a prosecution team. And what does the prosecution team trying to do? They are trying to say that, yes, this person has committed a crime. And we have witnesses to testify that that person committed a crime. Is that okay? But unfortunately for the defense team, the defense team cannot control whatever witnesses the prosecution brings forward. What the defense team can do is to try and prove to the court that the witness is not credible. Does that make sense? Because even though the witness can say, yes, yeah, the, I saw him, he did it, he killed that man, if the defense team can say, no, that witness is not reliable, that witness is not credible, the court will note that and will throw away 
the evidence or the testimony of the witness. Do you get it? So, there are false witnesses and there are true witnesses. Because when they, when, when, when they arrested Jesus, the Bible says they were looking for witnesses to testify and they couldn't find anybody. And the Bible says false witnesses came up to tell lies about Jesus. But that's not where I'm going. So, for you and I to be an effective witness, we need to be successful in producing the desired or intended result. That's number one. Number two, we need to reach out to our intended audience, our Jerusalem, our Judea, our Samaria, and the other ends of it. Praise God. Look at the apostles. The apostles were effective witnesses. In Acts chapter 5, now, let's go to Acts chapter 4, verse 33. The Bible says, and with great power. Somebody said, with great power. You and I cannot be effective witnesses without power. The Bible says, with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great peace was upon them. Acts 4, 33. Acts 5, 32. Peter said, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God had given to them that obey him. Okay, shall we look at the points? Three points today. Number one, how can we be effective witnesses? How can we be effective in telling people about Jesus? Number one, we need to engage the Holy Spirit. Because if we go back to our text, senior pastor told us last week, the King James says, and ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. So what that means is that no power, witnesses is not effective. Power, witness becomes effective. And I'll tell you why. Why is it necessary for you to engage the Holy Spirit? Number one. Number one. Under engaging the Holy Spirit. Number one. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that is the power of salvation. Okay? So, the person that needs to be saved is under a cause of sin. And it's only the power of the Holy Spirit that can break that cause of sin. It's only the power of the Holy Spirit that can bring salvation. So if you are witnessing without that power, you are just having an intellectual discussion. Intellectual discussion does not save people. I, I, am, I, am, I, am I talking, sir? Intellectual discussion or, or, or <laughs> argumentative discussion Persuasive discussion does not bring salvation. You don't need to talk much. You just need to engage the power. Because Paul said to us, Paul said, Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Good news of Christ. For it is God's power. Somebody say God's power. Oh, I didn't know. Somebody say God's power. He says, it is God's power walking, walking unto salvation for deliverance. You see, when somebody needs to be born again, it's a deliverance from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom, and that needs power. You can't just talk and think somebody will get saved. No. Paul said, it is, where am I? He says, for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and a confident surrender and firm reliance to the Jew first and to the Greek. That's Romans chapter 1, verse 16 in the Amplified Classic. Amen? So what am I saying to you, friends? The power of the Holy Spirit is what brings salvation. Somebody say it's the power of salvation. Can I say to you that that power has two dimensions? Somebody say two dimensions. The first, the first dimension is from the Greek word, exousia, in John chapter 1, verse 12. 
He says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power. Somebody say power. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons or children of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, exousia is a Greek word translated power in that verse. And exousia means uh, a delegated power. But actually, the root word that means exousia, it means that it is authority. Somebody say authority. Authority or the right. Somebody say right. Another translation says he gives them the right or he gives them the authority to become children of God. But not only the delegated authority, but the right as a believer to use that power when you are witnessing. Number second dimension is the Greek word dunamis, meaning inherent power, power that reproduces itself. And that's the Greek word translated power in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Hallelujah. So that's number one. Why do we need to engage the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit produces a power. Number two, the Holy Spirit produces boldness. Some of you are shy. Oh, I, I don't know how to talk. Oh, I, 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 that's why you need the Holy Ghost. Because when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you are able to overcome your inhibitions. You become bold. You become courageous. So, the Holy Ghost power produces boldness. Somebody say boldness. The Holy Ghost produces courage. So that even in the midst of fear, you are able to step out. Even in the midst of, of, of inhibitions, you are able to step out, step out. Number four, the Holy Ghost produces wisdom. Wisdom to go about it. You remember what we were talking about? How to do it well. Maybe if you are in Africa... You can take a bell and say, receive Jesus. But wisdom will <laughs> inform you that if you do that in the street of Nottingham, amen, the crisis team will come and arrest you because they know that you're not okay upstairs. So the Holy Spirit will provide you with wisdom. Wisdom to know when to preach. Wisdom to know when not to preach. Wisdom to know when to care. Wisdom to know when to visit. Wisdom to know to help your neighbor to mow their lawn. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are strategies. Wisdom is the door to the strategy which you will employ. Because you cannot employ the same strategy in witnessing. Jesus did not employ the same strategy throughout his ministry. Every For every Every person, the strategy is the same. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. The problem why you've not been effective is that everybody you use, this morning they taught us to use the law. But the Holy Ghost will tell you, this one, you don't need to use the law. This one, you don't even need to preach. This one, you just need to say, oh, that's, uh, can I borrow you, Pastor Pat? So this one, she, you know, she turned 40 last month. This one, oh, that's a lot, lot, beautiful dress. Yes, beautiful, be, be, beautiful dress. Praise God. Beautiful dress. I know, she's 40. She's 40. She looks 40, although, praise God. You know, beautiful dress. And do you know, because this lady, nobody has really appreciated her. Because of her background, nobody really meant, really meant it to say, oh, beautiful, beautiful dress. That is the strategy the Holy Ghost has given you. And because you started that way, there is already a connection. Oh, this person really means it. Praise God. And do you know what? I know somebody who is beautiful like you. His name is Jesus. Can, 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 sit down. Can, can you see? Strategy. But you, everybody, is, you want to use the law. Everybody, no, no, it doesn't work that way. Everybody wants to tell them you go to hell. No, 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 don't tell them you go to hell. Wait for the Holy Ghost to tell you the strategy. Somebody say wisdom. Number, what am I? The Holy Ghost, oh, no, I'm more than three. So the Holy Ghost will give you power, it will give you boldness, courage, wisdom, confidence, grace, and the Holy Ghost will give you, you can number them, I've got them bullet points. The Holy Ghost will give you empowered, authoritative speech. Somebody say authoritative speech. <laughs> you know, sir, I studied the Bible and I realized that Jesus 
didn't start to preach until he received the Holy Ghost. Read your Bible. He didn't start any ministry until he engaged the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, when he engaged the Holy Ghost, mommy, after that experience, you know what he did? He went to the temple and they gave him Isaiah and he began to read. And the Bible says, the people were amazed with the authority of his speech. What has changed? The Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! You know, was it last week? No, we were doing the podcast last week with mommy pastor. And mommy pastor was asking us questions. You know me, I like to talk. You know, in my house, they say when daddy wants to tell his story, he will start from the beginning. And in the middle, we're saying, okay, what is the story? Because you know, you, you, have, to, you have to, to be a good storyteller, you put Jews into it. <laughs> so after the podcast, I, I said to mommy, I said, I'm really sorry if I talk too much. Uh, mommy said, no, it's okay. You know, mommy's a nice mommy. She said, oh, it's okay. We can accommodate you for talking too much. Uh, you know, and my wife said, you know, my husband is as if when the anointing comes upon him like this, he's a different person. Then when he gets home, he's a different person. I said, that's the anointing. Because the anointing changes you. The anointing will give you authoritative speech. Because the Bible says that God will give you the tongue of the learned. So, when you are witnessing, you don't need to be eloquent. Eloquence does not save people. <laughs> it's not about eloquence. If I'm, I'm, very, I'm very concerned when people are so eloquent because eloquence, there's no substance. Eloquence is, 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 a, is a cover for anointing. When you are anointed, you don't need to be eloquent. Have you seen Baba Deboe? The man is so simple. He's not jumping around like me. The man is so simple. He will just stay there, say, preach one verse, and people are saved. People's lives are changed. That's anointing. That's grace. That's what you need to be effective. Don't, don't, ah, 12 minutes. Don't engage. Praise God. The Holy Spirit will give you inspiration. The Holy Spirit will give you the right words that are relevant in every, every situation. That's why you need to engage him. You don't need to worry about what to say and how to say it. It will give you the tongue of the learned. In Luke chapter 4, verse 22, the Bible says, And all bear him witness and wonder at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, He is not this Joseph's son. Ah, Joseph, ah, we, 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 we change his pampas. How come he's. That's the anointing. That's the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, That's the Holy Ghost. I love Paul. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, one of my favorite verses, verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. In the Amplified Classic, look at me, ladies and gentlemen. Paul said, and my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive, enticing, and plausible words of wisdom. Don't persuade people. Don't bring arguments that are plausible. Paul said, but my message were in demonstration of what? In demonstration of what? You're not reading your Bible. In demonstration of what? The spirit and power. Is it not on this? Yeah. Hey, in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. You need to connect with the Holy Spirit for there to be a flow of power. You cannot have the flow of power until you engage with the Holy Spirit. So Paul said, it is a speech that is in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. A proof of the Spirit and power of God operating on me and staring in the minds of my hearers the most holy emotions, and thus persuading them. Do you get it? I've got to rush. So whatever number you are, the Holy Spirit will give you guidance. You, we saw in Acts chapter 8, the King Philip, who became evangelist. Praise God. Look at me, ladies and gentlemen. You know when Jesus died, look at me, the apostles were in Jerusalem, and to, God told them, wait until you be endured before you go out. So, the Bible says they went out. But before they went out, they had to start in Jerusalem first. Okay? And then, in chapter 8 of Acts, the Bible says, Philip went to Samaria. So, okay, let me, let me explain to you. So, Jerusalem is like this capital of Judea. So, like, Nottingham is the capital of Nottinghamshire. Is that true? Yeah? And then, when you move to the north... 
you have Samaria. And then when you move further to the north, you have Galilee, where Jesus came from. So Jesus was from the north. Okay? And the Samarians are in between. And the, Sam the Samaritans are in between. And the Samaritans, as you know, they are like outcasts. They are not, you know. So that's why Jesus says, start from Jerusalem, then Judea, and then move to the north, Samaria, and then to Galilee, and then to the rest of the world. So in Acts chapter 8, Philip went to Samaria. After they've established in Jerusalem, Philip went to Samaria and things were happening. Somebody said things were happening. There was a great revival. People received, miracles were happening. Ah, when they saw the miracles, they quickly sent for Peter and John to come to Samaria. Say, ah, gospel is spreading in Samaria, but God had a different agenda. Somebody said different agenda. In the midst of that revival, God said to Philip, leave Samaria and start to go towards Gaza because this gospel is not just for Samaria this gospel is for thee and there was an Ethiopian Enoch who was going to Ethiopia who was going to take the gospel to Africa that's why you need guidance praise God so thank God that the church is organizing evangelism you are not going to re rely on the church evangelism you're going to rely on the Holy Spirit because as you leave church today and you're going to Tesco the Holy Spirit will say, help that woman to carry her trolley. God is setting you up to give you an opportunity to witness. Praise God. That's why you need to be sensitive to this Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit is a, he is a companion. He's, he helps us in everything. He gives you guidance. What else does he give you? He gives you spiritual insight and revelation. And actually, it is the Holy Spirit that convicts a sinner. So conviction. Number next bullet point: the Holy Spirit will bring, give you proof and fruit, and the Holy Spirit will also give you signs and wonders and miracles. Mark sixteen verse fifteen says that, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils; they shall heal the sick. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That, those are the signs and wonders and miracles. Let, let, me, let me show you Peter. Peter was one of the ringleaders of the apostles of Jesus. You remember? Then they arrested Jesus. He, Jesus had not died though. They arrested him. And uh, a young girl came and said, you are one of them. In other words, they were asking Peter to be a witness. All the girl was saying is that you are one of them. You are one of the disciples, yeah? In other words, they're asking him, tell us what you know about this Jesus. And all Peter needed to do was, say, yes, he's my master. Don't worry about what is happening. He's, he's, he's going to die, but he will he rise again. Ah, Peter said, I don't know him. Ah! Okay, the girl who left. Another girl, the Bible says, made. You know, I love King James. Bible. Another girl came. Girl came and said, oh, Peter. You are one of them. In fact, the way you speak, <laughs> you are from Igbo land. You are from in fact, you, the way you speak in Bati. We... <laughs> Peter said, what, 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 I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. Go and read your Bible. I don't understand what you are saying. I don't know what you are saying. Please, I, I don't know the man. <laughs> one hour later, people around said, you look like them. You look like, yeah, yeah. And then the Bible says, he began to curse. He began to swear. I, I don't know. I, what? He began to swear. He denied Jesus. I wonder how many of us are denying Jesus the way we are behaving at our work. That's why we are not effective. Praise God. Because they see you and they think you are one of them. But the more they think you are one of them, they see your behavior. Your behavior is not tantamount to Somebody who is a disciple of Jesus. How can you be effective? But something happened. The Holy Ghost, I call him the Holy Ghost, the game changer. The same Peter was changed by the Holy Ghost. He received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2. And he gave his first sermon in Acts chapter 2 verse 14. <laughs> you need to listen to the sermon. The sermon of Peter was a witness to what he knew, what he experienced. That's what you need to do as a witness. Praise God. 
I'll give you an example. At work, there was a lady I'm, I've been targeting to witness to. I don't know how to do it. And then one day, we were talking, and she said, she's trying to give up smoking. I said, ah, I know somebody who can help you. His name is Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not preaching yet. I said, oh, do you really want to stop? I said, she said, yes, she's tried. I said, ah, Jesus can help you. He has helped me. There was a time my son was having issues at school, and we prayed about it. You won't believe it. The issue was resolved. She said, yeah, okay, it won't harm me if you can. Well, he said, I don't know how to pray. I said, don't worry, you leave it to me. I will do the prayers. Praise God. Are you, are you understanding me? That's what a witness does. You tell, you don't need to know Bible too much. You don't need to know, quote me. You know, senior pastor will quote me. Me, I know a bit of Bible, but you do, to be a witness, you don't need to know Bible. You just need to know Jesus. If you know Jesus, do you know Jesus? Do, do you know Jesus? Can you talk about what Jesus has done for you? That's all. Praise God. You know, the first sermon Peter gave, 3,000 people gave their life to Jesus. <laughs> Acts chapter 2 verse 40. And with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from the unto one, this unto one generation. Then they that godly received his, the word were baptized. And the same day, there were added to, the, or to them about 3,000. The same Peter that denied Jesus three times. What has happened now? Holy Ghost. Now, Acts chapter 3. The first healing. Praise God. Heal the man at the beautiful gate. And look at me. That miracle opened up another opportunity for Peter to witness. And Peter witnessed. The second time, 5,000 people. 5,000. How many altogether? In two days. 3,000, 8,000 people because of the Holy Ghost. This was somebody who denied Jesus, who couldn't talk about Jesus as his master. But Holy Ghost brought the game changer. Let's move on to Acts chapter 4. They began to threaten them. So the Holy Ghost is what you need to overcome threatenings, and intimidation. Because when they intimidated, intimidated them and threatened them not to preach, the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 21. Now listen. All right, let me read Acts chapter 4 verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter did not just open his mouth. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. And he spoke. And said, ye rulers of people and elders of Israel. Are you with me? So, the Holy Ghost will give you power to in overcome any threat or intimidation. The Holy Ghost will give you power to, to overcome persecution. Because the truth is that some people experience persecution because of the gospel. And you need the Holy Ghost to overcome those persecution. And you saw what happened. In Acts chapter 5, they imprisoned them. And the Holy Ghost released them. Amen. In the last one minute that I have, let me just mention the third point. The third point is to be a credible witness. Because Senior Pastor did talk about the second point, engaging with your Jerusalem. But let's go to the last one in the last one minute. So, for your witnessing to be effective, you must, you, you must be a credible witness. That means that you must have integrity, consistency. Your life must be a proof, solid proof. Your life must produce, my life must produce undisputed evidence. A credible witness is a witness who comes across as competent and worthy of belief. The testimony is assumed to be more than likely to be true due to the experience, knowledge, training, and sense of honesty. A credible witness must be reliable. Your testimony must be accurate and without doubts or errors. And therefore, your life, my life, should be a testimony of Jesus. Daniel was a credible witness. In Daniel chapter 6, the Bible says, Then the presidents and princes sought to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. 
for as much as he was faithful. Neither was there any error of fault found in him. Then said this man, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. A credible witness does not live a double life. You cannot be a credible witness to your children when they see the way you live. Your children know you don't pray. Amen? And your wife knows. Praise God. Your spouse knows that you don't pray. How can you be a credible witness when you lie? Praise God. And you want to, you, you want to engage your Jerusalem. Your Jerusalem is your household, your children, your wife, your husband. You have to, your life must be credible because the Bible says we preach Christ by deeds and words. The Holy Spirit will, will explain the rest to you because my time is up. Let me just say this before, before I close. Acts chapter 4 verse 13. I think that's a good one to close. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Did I say 12? I said, I, I thought you were listening, yes. It says, now... When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and what can we read it together? When they saw, and ah, wait, 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 what happened? They that what did they perceive? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Ah, this is how to be an effective witness. When, <laughs> when your life, when people can perceive that you, you, you have been with Jesus, from what outflows from your life, even before you open your mouth to say Jesus loves you, they, they, they see, they can perceive that you're a credible witness. Bow your heads and hold your neighbor's hand and pray for them. Pray for them. Say, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come upon my brother. Because without the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we cannot be effective. Say, Lord, the apostles received the Holy Ghost before they went out. Holy Spirit, come upon us in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Help, give us boldness. Give us confidence. Give us authoritative speech. Give us strategy. Give us guidance. Give us wisdom. Mention those points. Say, Holy Spirit, we're asking right now. Help us to know when to pray, when to show love, when to, you know, give us the strength. Give us the confidence. Give us the power to overcome our inhibitions, our, our, our in, whatever is intimidating us. Give us, give us the strength. We receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Now pray for yourself. Put your hands on your head. Say, Lord, help me to be a credible witness. Let me not be a false witness. Let my life truly represent Christ. So that people in my Jerusalem, people in my Judea, people in my Samaria, people in, 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 in the rest of the world will perceive that I've been with Jesus. Let them perceive even before I open my mouth. As my life becomes a testimony in Jesus name we pray as we bow our heads maybe you have not met this Jesus this is a good opportunity while we're talking about this for you to give your life to Jesus the apostles could not there preach about Jesus that they did not know you cannot witness you cannot share an experience that you have not had and so whether you're watching online or you're here I want to give you an opportunity. I want to make an invitation for you to give your life to Jesus. To come into release. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he power. To them gave me authority to become the sons of God, as many as I believe on his name. So if you are here, or you're watching me, or you're listening to me, why don't you lift up your right hand and say, Lord Jesus. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. 
Lord Jesus, I confess that you died for me. I confess that you rose on the third day. And I ask you to come into my life right now. I confess all my sins and I repent of my sins. I receive your love for me. And so I receive eternal life. I come into relationship with you today as I give my heart and my life to you. Holy Spirit, I ask you to indwell my spirit and my heart right now. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, as I give my life to you, empower me to tell others about Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that prayer, it's a simple prayer, but it's a powerful prayer. If you pray that prayer wherever you are, I want to pray for you. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit will come upon you right now in the name of Jesus. And you will experience the joy of salvation. And I break the power of sin and death over your life in the name of Jesus. And I decree that your name be written in the Lamb's Book of Life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we'll pray. Put your hands together for Jesus.